Ola, and welcome to Vive Nutrition Radio, the first ever Spanglish podcast where you will hear interviews with the top minds in nutrition, performance, fitness, and health in both English and Spanish. Here is your host, expert registered dietitian, Andres Ayesta, on a mission to help you take your nutrition to the next level. Hope you're ready for this. Let's dive right in. Hola amigos and welcome back to yet another episode of Vivi Nutrition Radio. This is episode number eight and today we're chatting uh, about keeping your nutrition basic as fuck. Now I haven't decided you know, if uh, my my podcast is going to have some foul language but I guess it just did um, but I'll let you guys uh, know if this is going to continue or not but for this, I wanted to bring a cool guest who lives by this, and he is here to drop some awesome knowledge bombs with us today. His name is Alec, Alex Macklin, and he's a nutrition and health coach from Memphis, Tennessee. He's been training in Olympic weightlifting and CrossFit since 2010 and has coached hundreds of athletes through online programs in weightlifting and nutrition since 2013. And he's also a former coach and co-host of the very famous Barbell Shrugged or Barbell Shrugged podcast. And now he's a full-time nutrition coach who is all about keeping nutrition basic AF, which you know what the F means, and sustainable. <laughs> he's had success with all types of people at all stages of their journeys from seasoned competitive athletes looking to perform their best to regular folks just starting their journey. His main mission is to light the fire within you to make true lasting change and empower you to become the absolute best version of yourself through better health, nutrition, and fitness, which Dude, like when I read this, I'm like, I want to join this program. So, dude, Alex, <laughs> welcome to the show, man. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me on. Awesome, man. Well, like I'm, like I said, I, I, like we were talking about before we even started the podcast. I, I always like to bring people that that bring something to the table and, and something different. So, the first thing I wanted to ask you, I guess, would be, how did that basic as fuck thing <laughs> started? Like, what kind of like man got that process going? <laughs> I have no idea, man. I, I literally just, you know, I, I don't know. I mess around on social media and on, on Instagram and I always see like all these like hashtags and stuff like on Instagram that kind of don't make any sense or just all over the place. And I just, you know, I, I, I was picked, I, I take like pictures of my food and post it on, on, um, on uh, Instagram and stuff like that. And I was looking at it, I'm like, this plate just looks completely basic. It was just like simple foods, you know, like, nothing too fancy, you know, just plain, like not plain, but you know, just simple. Right. Like, yeah. and I'm like, this plate is just basic as fuck. <laughs> I like hashtag it basic as fuck nutrition. And somebody commented, somebody DM me. She was, he was like, you need to keep basic as fuck nutrition. You need to like brand that. And I was like, hmm, yeah, maybe I will. And I thought about it and I was like, man, this just, it's so stupid, but it's just like, it's so stupid. It's good. <laughs> so, That's all, No, dude, it's also, it's catchy yeah. for sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, but, but it kind of, it, it, it fits me. Uh, and I've, and I've really, uh, taken to embracing it because I am about like the basic stuff, you know, like there's a lot of stuff out there, like, especially in fitness and nutrition, just tries to make things really, really complicated. And I mean, I don't, I'm not trying to, uh, I'm not trying to oversimplify things for sure. I'm not trying to do that, but you know, when people are just also just trying to eat healthy, live a better life, like they may not need to do all this complicated stuff, you know, and they just want to, they just want to do something that's sustainable and, and helps them feel good and feel better. And you know, that's, that's kind of my, that's kind of my, I guess, basic as fuck. Like that's why I, philosophy, right? Yeah. That. Yeah, 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 and that's good. And one of the things that kind of like th that was really interesting to me when I was kind of reading through your profile and your website was that you were almost to the verge of getting your PhD in biomedical engineering. So the yeah. question here, which I'm sure you get all the time, is like, how in the hell did that did that kind of <laughs> big turn came about from there to full time health and nutrition coach? Like, what kind of like sparked that change? Like, what made you? say like hey i need to i need to do something different yeah yeah so i was working on a phd i got a master's um and then you know i started doing crossfit um and uh with mike bledsoe and doug larson who yes. are the host uh well doug is still the host i think of, of barbell shrug and mike does his own podcast um but uh yeah for the longest time they were the two hosts you know, along with Chris Moore, the Barbell Stroke podcast. So they had a gym and I stepped into the gym one day and I just started, you know, doing CrossFit. 
And uh, and I got really into weightlifting. um, And Mike was my first weightlifting coach um, and got really, really into the sport, competed, and then even coached people, started coaching people uh, at their gym. And then, you know, they started that podcast uh, when I was, you know, still in grad school. And, you know, it, it took off and they started like doing programs and things like that. And then, and Mike was like, Hey, you want to come work in the fitness industry? You know, at first I was like, eh, you know, like I got this, I'm trying to finish this PhD and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And my parents really wanted me to finish it, but I just wasn't feeling it. You know, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't for me. And, um, I just decided to just, you know, one day just say, you know what, I'm going to do this. I'm, I'm going to go in this fitness industry. I'm just going to, I'm just going to be a professional meathead. <laughs> so that's awesome. I started, yeah. So I started coaching. I started coaching their programs and that's where I, I got really my start with, you know, online coaching through their uh, programs like the muscle gain challenge. Uh, I did some nutrition coaching there, like helping, helping people put on muscle mass. Um, and then, you know, with the flight program, that's a weightlifting program. I helped uh, create that program. And then along with the nutrition uh, programs that we have for other, some of our other like training programs. Yeah. Nice, man. Now, one thing I, but I guess like also some people have asked you, like, did you regret making that decision of leaving that to actually come in and to actually do nutrition full time? No, nah, man, I, I'm definitely where I am supposed yeah. to be, you know, uh, I like helping people, you know, uh, well, I love, I love, love training, love fitness, love health, and I love helping people. And I, definitely didn't see myself like being able to help somebody like directly along with the path that I was doing the path that I was at, you know, I probably would have, you know, gotten a job in some kind of industry place and sit behind a desk. And, you know, I, I, it just, I've been a, I've been a a cog in a big machine, you know? Um, and now I can really, really make an impact on multiple people's lives through, you know, what I have, you know, my knowledge and my expertise. So, yeah. Nice. Like, yeah. And actually well, I have, yeah. it's, it's interesting because I, I started when, when I was like, I'm from Venezuela. So I, I actually started my career there and I wanted to be a doctor. So I, I actually apply and I talk about this in my first episode of how I applied to medical school in, in Venezuela, where I'm from. So 10,000 people took that test as an admissions test for like this really hard school. Um, only 30 people get in. I wow. got 300 like out of like 10,000. So that was still top 10%, but still not were able to get in. And they told me literally say, Hey, you can join this nutrition school and then transfer over. And I'm like, okay, sure. Like I'll do that. And I never looked mm-hmm. back because I realized that, you know, nutrition, which unlike medicine is, is like, you're able to kind of provide quality of life to, to a lot of the people that you're and then you can help them prevent disease and you can help them you know kind of like be more functional and do many things in life and i think that actually is what kind of sparked the same kind of change that you did when you're like okay you know what like biomedical engineering maybe this will give me a ton of money but then it just doesn't it doesn't give me that sense of fulfillment to kind of help others the same way that i could into like the fitness programming i think it's definitely something that kind of did that for you Absolutely. I mean, you know, when I was in grad school and and part of the reason why also too, I didn't mention this, but I was super overweight. Um, you know, I was, yeah, I was probably like 200 some pounds, not good 200 pounds when I was (laughs) in grad school. And, uh, you know, I saw the effect of, you know, nutrition and then training and how that really just 180 my life, you know? And so I felt like, you know, this is something when I started to coach people, like, okay, like I, I see people where I was. Right. And then I can help them get to a better place where I like, like where I am right now. And that's really, you know, what motivates me to help people like really, really, truly change. Yeah. Cause you came from, from that. And that's the thing Like for me, like I've, I've never been overweight. And that's one of the things that a lot of, you know, like I think a lot about because sometimes I say, well, I don't have like, I, I'm not going to say the experience, but I don't come from a point where 
have struggled with something, you know, that many people have before and they, they, they have that mentality. They, they come from that, that kind of like behavior change that they had to, to really kind of change in their lives to make, to make this leap into the better lifestyle, better health. And I say, you know what, like, I don't really have that. But so, so it makes it sometimes difficult for me because of the fact that, you know, I'm not, you know, I, I didn't live that, you know, so it's, it's obviously yeah. makes it difficult because I just kind of look at it from the perspective of, well, like I have the knowledge to understand exactly what needs to be done. But in your case, and I think actually that's super valuable for a lot of people that you help out is the fact that, you know, you can, you live that life. You, 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 you know, you were, you were wearing those shoes at some point and you can definitely correlate yeah. and, and kind of like step on, on the same kind of like, you know, steps that people are, are in that you're helping out right now. Right. So, so I think that makes a massive difference. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So, having, having that experience and understanding what that, what it feels like, you know, to be overweight and be self-conscious about your body. Like these are all things that like, you know, it, it helps to empathize. And I think with, with coaching, like empathy is going to be number one skill, you know, other than, you know, knowledge, obviously an expertise, like you got to be able to understand somebody and empathize with what they're, what they're dealing with. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's huge, man. So I guess like, so fast forward into like this process and you start with, you know, Barbell Shrugged and which you, you started from the beginning with them and now they're huge. So that's, that's definitely something amazing. Um, but so what, what was kind of like your next step, you know, cause I know you went through um, some certification process or I know like I'm a big fan of precision nutrition. Um, yeah. so, so maybe kind of tell us like, so you wanted to obviously study or, or educate yourself a little bit more so you could coach people. People, what was that like for you and, and kind of what was your experience, um, you know, becoming certified in this pro in, in precision nutrition and, and what is that like, or what is that kind of like that type of philosophy that they teach you? Yeah, no, I really, I really jive with, with, uh, precision nutrition. I think like for anybody out there listening, I definitely recommend if, if you're interested in, and I'm not getting paid to say this. So just FYI, like, I think it's a very, it's, it's probably one of the, I mean, I have, that's the only one I've done, like, as far as like certification, I mean, I've gone to like seminars and, and listen to people and all that kind of stuff. But as far as like certifications, um, and in NCI as well, like that one is like precision nutrition is probably the best, I think, in my opinion, uh, especially for someone who's just starting because they start, they teach you not just about the science behind nutrition, um, they go very in depth with that, but they also teach you how to coach people, which is the number one thing. Like if you're, if you're going to coach people, you have to understand and know how to get someone to change, like how to help them change, because that's what this is all about. Like nutrition, fitness, health, like all of this is about change. And so if you do not understand the, the psychology and how to get somebody to change, then you, you won't, you only be able to coach certain people. And those people would be people that are already motivated. They already know what they're doing. Like, uh, I can't remember what they say, but it, it a, a really great coach, like an elite coach can coach anybody, can get anybody to change. Um, and so like, that's how they, kind of structure their, that's their kind of main philosophy too. And then also just basically meeting somebody where they are, right? Like, um, you know, when I was coaching at, at, and shrugged and things like that, like we'd have these programs, um, you know, and, and a lot of them, like people were beginners and stuff like that, but we always tailored what we did, like to try to meet somebody where they are rather than, you know, you know, try to try to do things that they weren't ready for or weren't willing to do. So like, that's, that's a really big concept with them. Like the whole concept, like readiness, willingness, and ability. Um, because if you want to change, if you have the ready, if you're ready to change, you're willing to change, you're able to change. That's what you're going to be able to change. Like whatever that, that is, is. That's huge, man. And like, I, I like to like to, to kind of talk about this a little bit more because we, and I'm sure it happens to you. It happens to me, to a lot of people that, that are interested in working with, with a nutrition coach and that they are in different places in their life. And, you know, yeah. some of them start from like, they come to you there with the expectation for them is, I want to diet. I want to lose weight. Like, give it to me. Like, give me whatever is like the, the antidote or like the medicine for this issue that I have. And they're expecting, obviously, like a piece of paper that is going to give them kind of like the, the step down process. Like, you know, do this. And obviously, that's how we live in a billion dollar industry right now. And like the dieting industry, which just usually yeah. leverages 
on that process of like giving you like this little piece of paper and you're going to get this result. Or for example, I work with a lot of people, a lot of athletes that are trying to gain weight. So it's the same thing. Like, Oh, take this supplement, which now leads to the supplement industry. And you're going to put on like this much muscle mass. So I guess like the question is like, and going back to what you mentioned about meeting people where they're at, like, how do you, how do you start that conversation with that person that is just saying like, give me a diet, give me something, you know, what is like the starting point for somebody like that? Yeah. Um, I think what I do, and again, like what I do is I really interview them and go deep into why, you know, they want certain things, you know, asking them questions, questioning why they, what their motivations are, like trying to get as much information like as, from them as possible. Um, because, you know, again, like somebody could say like, well, give me this, give me this result. And I'm asked, I'm asked them like, why, like, why do you want, why do you want this? Uh, why do you want it this way? Like, why do you think that will help you? Um, and so I think what that does is it, 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 it gets people to like, well, I guess, I guess how I say it is by asking them why they oftentimes come to their own people, people know what, what they need, right? Like yeah. sometimes people know like what's best for them. And they, they may just be hearing things like what they're seeing, like online through like fitness and like blogs and stuff. But then they, they start opening up and like, well, I don't want to, I don't want to diet. Like, I don't want to do all this stuff. Like I want to, I want to live a normal life. I want to be able to enjoy food. I want to be able to, you know, hang out with my kids and play around with my kids and want better energy. And then that's, that's where we start. That's when we can start to work. So when we, when I start to see, when I start to hear them say things that they want to do and it doesn't sound anything like a diet and it's more like changing certain aspects of their lifestyle, that's what now we can start to work. And then that's when you start like the education process and yeah. yeah. And, and I think that's a key thing. So, so for you, if you listening in, like, so the, the key thing for you to get started in any kind of process is to understand that there's a reasoning there's a why behind, you know, like the reasoning why you're calling somebody for help, right? Because you're trying to, right. to obviously solve a problem that it's not just, okay, lose weight. What is losing weight or what is gaining muscle going to do for you? Like what is kind of yeah. like that, that feel of like that sense of fulfillment that is going to give you. And obviously that's like the, where you start. And, and there's yeah. many different people that are in different spots in their lives. And I guess like some of them are more clear on that. And some of them are like, they're just starting. And they think that obviously, well, if I get to this very quickly, that's going to come, you know, that happiness, that sense of joy, that it's just going to come with it. And that's the part yeah. of that, you know, us coaches, I think that's the most important thing that, that we have to, to teach him. Yeah. And we got to teach people like, you know, again, like the education aspect of it, like, you know, people always want quick things, but quick things, a lot of times what you have to do for them, they don't last. Right. Like yeah. I mean, how many times have people, people done some kind of diet or challenge or whatever. And once they stop, like, it's over with. And that's one of my things is about like making something sustainable. Like, and people want sustainability. I, I don't think people want to freaking yo-yo diet all the time, man. Yeah. People don't want to sit there and gain and lose the same 20 pounds over and over and over again. They don't want to do it. So it's a patient and, and, portion of thing. I think the patience and like not being patient enough to get through that process that people are just not, yeah. not excited about. So that's, that's why I feel like the join on that. Yeah. I mean, you can't, there's no shortcuts. Like, you know, people talk about that and it's, it, it, again, people you, you hear that all the time, but it's true. There are no shortcuts to this. Like you have to go through all the steps in order to change. It's about change and change is not easy. Like change takes time and it's uncomfortable. Um, but if you can continuously persist and are consistent with making changes that are aligned with your goals, you will get to where you want to be. At, at, at some point in time like yeah that's that's a guarantee and i tell people like you know your your results are going to be a reflection of you know like the level of commitment that you're willing to put into this and and how much you know what a, what is the priority level that you're putting to your nutrition and i usually tell ask this to clients i say like hey man like listen you know on a scale one to ten like you this you said earlier 
you know, how committed are you to make this change? And, and how, like, how, what level of priority are you going to give this right now? Well, like a lot of, uh, I got a lot of stuff going on. Like, you know, I got buying a house. I got all these different things. It's like, so then are you sure that this is the level of priority you want to give it right now? Because it doesn't seem like it, even though you really want it. So yeah. that's the key thing. When you pair those two things together, level of commitment is at a 10, but at the same time, you're prioritizing this and you're making it like your number one thing right now. Then yeah. it, obviously those results are going to come a lot faster because the fact that you are invested in this process. So, so absolutely. Amen. I mean, that's, that's something that I have definitely learned. And it seems like you're kind of like do it on, on yeah. you're doing on the same kind of like way to doing it. Yeah, absolutely. And then, you know, if people listening, you gotta, if, you gotta be honest with yourself. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't do anybody any good, including yourself to just be dishonest about that. It's okay to say, look, this, this is just not a priority at this moment. Right? Like, if, yeah, I've, I've talked to many people that they've had, you know, they got tons of shit going on in their life, um, you know, and it's just not a priority for them. And that's okay. But, but you gotta, you gotta acknowledge that instead of just being like, well, you know, like making excuses and, and yeah, or beating yourself up, for, beating yeah. yourself up about not sticking to it. Like, it's okay. So, yeah, I think that's a big thing too. And that now, I guess a lot of people are always wondering, I guess, like, cause like precision nutrition has a specific philosophy on how they coach or they teach people on how to eat because they kind of use more of a intuitive eating kind of like visual portions of approach. And then I know you mentioned NCI, which is the national yeah. coaching Institute, I believe it's called, which I know you kind of started the process. Nutrition, nutrition coaching. Is yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is like more of Phillips. like macro yeah it's like with jason phillips which is like more kind of like macro based nutrition it's understanding exactly where your macronutrient levels should be on a daily basis and kind of like sticking to that which gives you a lot of freedom but at the same time it requires for you to actually do a lot of tracking and some people kind of become a little obsessed with that so if we compare both options i guess like what do you think is the most sustainable or what do you usually coach your or your clients or i guess like does it depend on the pe- type of person and how, how you kind of choose the type of like option or the type of like philosophy that you try to implement with your clients yeah totally so uh 100 depends on the individual um so first like nutrition in general is should be and is 100 up to the individual um because no one no one person is the same in terms of like their lifestyle, their eating habits or anything about them, their goals or whatever. So like tracking macros for somebody who never has used a food scale before or uh, runs around all day long, never is at home, doesn't, can't prepare any meals or anything like that. Like it probably, it, it, it may work, but it probably won't work for them. It's probably not a sustainable practice. They cannot do it consistently. Um, and but that being said, like, okay, so if they did a have more habit based approach, like it, that could maybe work because they would just change certain aspects of their lives. Like I've had clients that, uh, one guy, like he, all he did was like eat out fast food. Um, he was a CrossFitter <laughs> like he just ate fast food, like, all the time. Uh, well, he owned his own gym. So he was a busy gym owner. He didn't really have like, he was coaching a lot of classes and he had a kid at home, all that kind of stuff. Um, and he ate a lot of fast food. And I was like, all right, dude, how about this? How about instead of getting like fried chicken nuggets, how about you get like grilled chicken nuggets, a side salad from Chick-fil-A and then like a side of fruit from Chick-fil-A, like Chick-fil-A instead of like chicken nuggets, chicken sandwich and French fries and all that kind of stuff. How about you do switch that up? And he did and he lost weight and, and leaned out. So we didn't have, I didn't have him track. I didn't have him measure or weigh anything or track any macros. Yeah. He logged his food, but I mean, he logged his food from looking up online, you know, the menus and stuff. So again, like making whatever change needs to happen. And, but also a caveat to that would be is like, okay, you have to think about like, where are your goals? Like if you just want to lose a few pounds and you're already doing some, like if you're, let's just say like, you're like this guy eating fast food all the time and you want to lose some more pounds. Okay, well, maybe you don't need to track macros. Maybe you just need to like to make a few small changes to what you're already doing. Yeah. But if you're but if you're trying to get to like, you know, if you're a guy trying to get to like below 10% body fat and then perform at a high level and then all this kind of stuff like in CrossFit, you might need to track some macros because 
you just can't achieve those that level of results without paying attention exactly. very closely to the details. I yeah. think I'm a big, I'm, I'm, I'm exactly with you on that. I think it depends on the person because when you're looking for a specific, like dialed in nutrition result, specifically for specific, or for a certain type of athletes, then you just kind of have to, to, to do a little bit more tracking. And, and obviously that right. comes with like, I think, I guess, and I think precision nutrition talks a lot about this, the level that you're in right now, you know, yeah. like the, the experienced athlete or person that has a nutrition education, like, Hey, listen, like, you know, tracking macros may be the right way because we can make adjustments. And I work a lot with that kind of specific side of the population that kind of have that knowledge. Um, and I just kind of like steer them to that. But then, for example, I work with some um, um, NFL athletes who are not going to be tracking macros because yeah. hey, hey, they're going to be like, hey, anybody got time for that? And, you know, I'm not going to be like, no, I'm not going to do that. So so now you teach him like without really saying the word kind of intuitive, it's just based essentially strategies like where my gain where, where, and I, I don't know what you do with your with your uh, muscle gaining clients but essentially I say well you need to increase your caloric intake because you're burning a shit ton of calories when you're out there on the field and you're coming here and you're lifting you know heavy weight so if you're not eating enough of course like you're not going to see those those results you're not going to see like that change in body composition that you're looking for right. So, okay, here's an easy, here's an easy way that you can do this. Here's a thousand calorie shake that you can throw in like in the middle of the afternoon, you know, throw that in there. And that's just like, it's, it's, it's painless. You don't even have to worry about it because like it's drinkable. It's easy. Yeah. You know, like, what, is that something that you kind of like usually kind of teach them? Oh, yeah. Food? I mean, and that's the thing that is meeting somewhere where they are, right? Like, Again, like your NFL athletes, like they're not going to sit there and track macros and whatever, but they still want to perform at a very high level because they're getting paid to do that and they have to, exactly. otherwise they'll get paid. But again, so meeting somebody where they are in terms of, all right, that's where the art of, of coaching and being creative and figuring out, okay, well, here, here if you need calories, here's this thousand calorie shake. Like instead of giving somebody like just, okay, well, generic stuff that is, uh, yeah, could work for like, you know, all right, here's these macros, go, go track them. They're not going to be successful at that. Yeah. If you can't, if you cannot do something consistently and you cannot make it part of your lifestyle, it will not work. It will exactly. not work it's at not all. not sustainable. Yeah. I think that's yeah. definitely big. Now let's switch gears a little bit more into what actually what I wanted to talk about, because I think it's a massive topic and a lot of people want to hear how to do it and how to make it sustainable, which is meal prepping. And I know on your social media, you're huge into this and I love your posts and like the, the little snippets that you kind of give people like the seasonings and stuff like that. When I started yeah. meal prepping back in the day, I remember that I, I did it like consistently because I'm a huge, like, you know, routine guy. So the key thing that happened though, was the fact that I, um, I just got tired of it. You know, like I was not sustainable because of the fact that I got tired of eating the same things every day, you know? Mm -hmm. So how do you make meal prepping sustainable and, and kind of like, well, I guess like the first thing you need to tell people is like, what is meal prepping? Because some people think it's like, well, it's pretty given, but you know, a lot of people don't know what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, that's the thing, like meal prepping means different things to different people. You know, for some people it could mean, um, cooking all of your food mm -hmm. on one day, putting it into individual containers, like weighing everything or portion everything out, like labeling them and then putting in the refrigerator. And like, you have this like packed full fridge of food that you just basically eat out of Tupperware. Like to mm -hmm. some people that's meal prepping. That's not meal prepping in my house. <laughs> like, I don't, we don't do that. Uh, for some people, you know, it may just be preparing a few things like marinating some meats, cooking some meat on the grill, and then, you know, having an option, an array of things to choose from, and then mix and matching things to like make different combinations of meals and flavors and tastes and all that kind of stuff. That's more like what I do uh, and what, what we do in my household. So, you know, again, it, it means different things, to different people. Um, so in my mind, like meal prepping is just in a, in a basic uh, overall overarching definition is just having food prepared that you have prepared that will allow you to essentially stick to whatever nutrition plan or uh, whatever you're doing and allow you to be the most successful and compliant to what you're doing. Okay. So mm -hmm. 
eating your own food is generally going to be better than going out to eat and, 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 you know, ordering fast food or whatever. So you're generally going to be able to control like the portions, you're going to be able to control like what goes in it, all that kind of stuff. So it's just, it's just cooking your own damn food, man. That's it. <laughs> yeah. I think that's, that's the biggest thing because I, I, that's what I teach people. And I say, I say to everyone, like people don't fail to plan. They just, people don't plan to fail. They fail to plan. Yeah. Yeah. The other way around. Yeah, yeah. So, which is like the biggest thing because I tell them like, Hey, listen, so if you wake up in the morning and you have no idea what you're going to eat, but you do have in plan, you, you have a schedule for work, you have meetings to attend to, and you already know this stuff ahead of time. You know, what if you actually put nutrition as part of your schedule too, and right. you had this stuff planned out for you? So I think that's what meal prepping comes in. And I agree 100% with you because I think people get overwhelmed and they, they get a little intimidated by the fact that they think of meal prepping of what they see in social media, which is like this yeah. massive like Tupperware what like deal, yeah. <laughs> of like all different things perfectly organized and beautifully colored yeah. and like, you know, all filtered out and nicely. And I say like, listen, like meal prepping could be literally making a tray of chicken, a thing of rice, and then maybe some mixed, ve mixed vegetables and having some good seasonings and good sauces along the way. That's it. Yeah. You know, yeah. it doesn't have to be too complicated, you know? So, no. so I think like that, that's kind of like the biggest thing. So I guess like, what are your go-to kind of meal prep options that maybe some of the listeners can start to maybe uh, draw some notes and, and kind of get some ideas as to um, how they can actually go through this process. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so what are some like the, your, your top 10 things or top, top five things that you usually recommend people that are just starting off on, on meal prepping and kind of go about it? Well, I guess what I'll recommend is just like what to focus on in terms of meal prepping. Like you definitely want to make sure you have these things. So one, you need some good kitchen equipment. Like you don't need a whole, like, you don't need a whole, a lot of, a lot of fancy stuff, but you do need some good kitchen equipment. Like don't, don't use any janky knives that don't cut for damn thing. So like <laughs> it'll just, it'll just, you'll just take forever to probably cut yourself. Uh, So get some good quality knives, get some good quality pans. Um, you know, a crock pot is always a good thing to have. Like you, like crock pot is probably, if you were the late, I'm the laziest like cooker. No ever. Ever. <laughs> I, yeah, like, I hate cooking almost like to the point where it's like, I don't even, I just want to get it done. So like a crock pot, like you can throw whatever in there and then just leave it and turn it on for like eight hours and it's good. And you have some, you have some good stuff in there later. So, you know, a few things that you need, you know, just basic kitchen stuff. So I would say, you know, knives, you know, pots and good pots and pans, and then a crock pot, and then get some quality uh, containers. Like you don't need to get those little individual meal things. If that's what helps you, then that's fine. If you like doing that, but I just have, you know, glass Pyrex containers that I'll just make a whole bunch of stuff and we'll just put it in the glass Pyrex containers and put it in the refrigerator. Um, The other aspect is, is that the planning aspect. Um, so you do need to plan some degree of like what you're going to make. Like you don't want to sit there and be like, well, I wonder what I'm going to make for this week. Like you do want to have some kind of idea because that's going to help you go to the store. Like, and I mean, again, I hate show grocery shopping. Like I feel like it's a chore. <laughs> so I want to go to the grocery store and get in and get out. So if you are able to plan and know what you're going to make, like me and my girlfriend, like we, we, we look at, so she'll go online and say, what do you want to eat this week? Sometimes I'm like, I don't know, you just pick, but we'll figure out, you know, something that we want to want to make and we'll go and go buy that. Right. And then come home and prepare it. So you, so the, the second thing is, is planning ahead and then blocking off time to do it. That's like the, probably the most important thing where I think where most people, most people mess up on is they fully intend to prep food, but they don't make an actual effort to make it sacred and block off time for it. It's kind of like an afterthought in their, in their busy day or busy week. No, you have to make time for it. Like you like have, you have to, to say, schedule it. Literally, you have to yeah, put it yeah, on your almost, phone. Yeah. Like literally almost like make an appointment with yourself to say that I'm going to cook some food. I'm going to go to the grocery store. I'm going to cook some food and I'm going to, I'm going to prepare food for, for a few days or for the week or whatever. You have to make it a priority. 
or otherwise it will not get done. Now I have a question. So do you, do you think like, what's like the most, and, and this is actually, it's something silly, but what do you think is the most effective day to do this? Because like a lot of people d decide that meal prepping universal day, like it's going to be Sunday. Sunday. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and what I think a lot of people start to find is like some Sundays are really motivated and some Sundays they just want to watch Netflix and chill. And they get to yeah. a point where it's like six o'clock at night and they're like, oh, shit, I got a meal prep. And they're like, oh, you yeah. know what? I just kind of like and then obviously all the food that is in the refrigerator that you just bought and like all like the plan that you had sit originally there. Yeah. Mind, it's going to sit there and you're going to waste money on all the food that's going to go bad with it. So I guess like yeah. what, what is like, do you usually do this on Sundays or like, do you try to pick a separate day that it's more likely that you're going to stick to? I mean, that's, that's the most important thing. Pick a day that you're going to stick to. Again, some people work on Sundays, so they're not able to do meal prepping, right? Like, again, it has to be a day that works for you. Just because you see it on Instagram, meal prep Sunday, doesn't mean you got to prep on Sunday. <laughs> you know, I pre we prep on Sunday, uh, but we also, we also will cook like midweek. I think a lot of things people too, like they'll think, uh, you know, they'll run out of food like halfway during the week. If that's you, you do need to designate a day to re up. Like you need yeah. to, you need to recook some or cook some more food or whatever so that you can have some food to carry you through the weekend. Cause you know, a lot of times I'll, I have, I talk to a lot of people, they'll like, yeah, we meal prep on Sunday. And then by like Thursday, we're out of food. And then the weekend comes and it just goes all out the window. So yeah, you may need, you may be a person that needs to prep like a couple of times a week. That just really depends on you. Um, and really though, like the day that you can do it consistently, that's the day that you should do it. Yeah. And whatever, whatever day that is, you need to make a date with yourself and block it off and make it sacred. Like you don't, you don't watch Netflix and skip out on going to work because you get fired. So there's <laughs> yeah. consequences to that. Right. So there should be, you should see it the same way that there's consequences to not respecting your time to meal prep. If that's yeah, what you need to do. And I think like, honestly, what I started doing recently is like, I still do it on Sundays or Saturdays, but what I started doing is like, first off, and I recommend this a lot is, you know, cook it as soon as you buy it. So as soon as you get home and you got all that stuff laid out on the kitchen table, like just cook it as soon as you get it. But then a lot of times what I usually recommend a lot of my clients as well to do is, you know, like make a sacrifice to wake up a little earlier, let's say on a Sunday get it out of the way on the mar in, the, in the morning and then get on with your day and you don't have to worry about it. Like I do that now. And then I don't have to worry about the fact that I want to Netflix and chill at six o'clock in the <laughs> afternoon and watch movies. Yeah, yeah. And Hey, all my stuff is already done. And, and right. that's, a, and this is the other part. And I don't know if you agree with me on this, but it's also, and again, keeping it basic and simple as fuck. <laughs> that's a key thing. Like I just got back from a trip from Mexico this weekend. Um, it was my birthday. It was awesome. And of course we got home last night at 10 and I'm like, Oh shit. Like, you know, we don't have any food. Literally I went this morning and again, this is obviously going a little, a little crazy, but I went this morning at five o'clock to Walmart to buy my stuff mm -hmm. and I meal prep up until seven before I came to work. And now I have enough food through, through last week through Saturday. And I spent 45 minutes doing this stuff because what yeah. did I do? I kept it simple. I made chicken mm -hmm. and that chicken, I can turn it into five different dishes. And I tell five different dishes, yeah, exactly. You know, you can turn it into, and I told this like to one of my clients the other day, like that chicken that you made in the oven, you can turn it into like a chicken salad. You can turn it into a chicken mm -hmm. sandwich, chicken with rice. You can do like, I don't know, like you can find five whatever different. you want. Exactly. And then people say it's like, well, I just get tired of eating the same thing. You don't have to chop up the chicken and do something different with it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, that's a, that's a very similar thing that I do as well. Like we, you know, we've, we do like uh, the like kind of a rule of twos where we'll have, you know, two proteins, two vegetables, two starches. Um, and we'll just mix and match things. And I think that that's, Again, that that's not like what people normally see on Instagram or whatever. Like they see everything laid out and like all like, you know, portioned out in a box. No, we just, you know, if I make some, if we make some ground beef, we'll turn that ground beef into like spaghetti. We'll, 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 we'll do other things with it. Like yeah. we, we can do all sorts of stuff with it. Yeah.
Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think that's just like kind of like the main thing. And, and just to kind of like to, to kind of circle around that and, and, you know, like you mentioned having the equipment and having like the plan. So if we were to summarize this, so first thing guys, like, you know, we had to make sure that you're having the proper equipment in the kitchen, you know, like Alex mentioned, you had to make sure you have um, a good set of knives. You need to make sure you're having um, the, uh, a good, maybe crock, but I prefer, I also have like maybe like a rice cooker or something like that. A good rice cooker. Of, yeah, that's good. Yeah. 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 A good set of pans. You can obviously get a little more fancier and have like a blender to do some things. And I have like, we got it and I don't always use it, but like a air fryer, which honestly it's, it's really cool. Um, you got stuff like that and as well in there too. But then at the same time, you don't have to feel like you need to make all this massive, you know, like nice little beautiful meal prep that you can just make like four different things and just kind of like mm -hmm. play around with it to make different recipes along the way. Right yeah totally so yeah. i think that's that's it kind of like the main kind of like take away from that too so yeah and that's just making time for it you know making time yeah. for it you know? yeah and and like i said like and i just added on to that just like maybe pick a time that is not the typical like the free you know time on a sunday that you're likely going to fail at doing this because something is gonna come up maybe choose a morning or Maybe choose like a Wednesday night where you get off work earlier and you're not working out. That's your rest day. You come home and you get your stuff done. And that's, that's, that's a good, easy way to go. And just obviously yeah. switching it up. So I don't know what you, I love what you, what you mentioned about the rule of twos, because I, I kind of do the same thing. I just don't call it that, but you know, essentially some days I do two proteins. Okay. Chicken and fish is going to be today. Other days going to be maybe some ground beef and you know, some white fish, you know, so I switched it up so I don't get tired. And I think I saw one post that you had about this seasonings that you like to oh, yeah, yeah. get to um what are some of the ones that you like to recommend because i'm a big trader joe's fans and i think you are as well yeah 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 well uh, like seasonings just in general like any type like we use uh i like i like tony's um yeah, yeah like some of this like some of the cajun seasonings and all that kind of stuff nice. like those are all good yeah 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 um but i mean yeah making foods taste good like we keep a lot of spices and stuff like that like again like and also, too, I think people get intimidated by cooking because they feel like they don't know how to cook. Like, they feel like they need a recipe. Um, you know, sometimes I'll, like, I'll be honest, like, I, for a long time, I used recipes. But we, we, we kind of use recipes. But a lot of times, like, man, we just know what tastes good. And that just comes with practice. So, like, again, like, the more you do it, like, the better you're going to get at it. And, and, you know, we can, we keep a variety of spices in our house. And so... You know, if we know, like, I know, like, if I want to make something Asian, um, you know, I'm going to do, like, you know, soy sauce or tamari or whatever, since we're gluten-free yep. over here. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, we'll do ginger and then onion and then maybe a little bit of honey and things like yeah. that. Or if we want to do Mexican, we'll do, like, cumin and, uh, you know, uh, cilantro and lime and all that kind of stuff. So, again, like, knowing what things taste taste together. Yeah, like Sometimes flavor profiles. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, flavor. Yeah, and sometimes you gotta you gotta do some recipes and stuff like that. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, so yeah, just play around with it and have fun. Like have fun with it. If you mess it up, if it doesn't go that well, you don't need to necessarily say like, "Well, I'm never doing this again." Just learn from it and try something else next time. That's it. Yeah. I think that's, that's the biggest thing. That's awesome, dude. Well, before we, we jump into our rapid fire questions, I guess I wanted to ask you something else, which is like, wh what do you think What's like the biggest thing or, or the biggest factors in which like people usually fail in nutrition? Like, you know, the, the biggest things that usually happen is it, is it just more than choosing the right foods? Is it more like mindset? Is it the lack of education all combined? What do you think people fail the most and what yeah. can they do about it? I, you know, I think it's a combination of a lot of those things, but I think if you uh, boil it down, people fail because of it's just it, the consistency aspect is not there uh, and the compliance. And, and that's probably due to the fact that it's just not sustainable. Whatever they're doing is not sustainable. Um, again, like everybody can do something like you can go because everybody does it, you know, go on a super, super strict diet you know, take out all carbs or only eat like certain like 12 foods or whatever, like approved foods. Everybody has probably done something like that. Um, but what ends up happening as soon as they stop doing it, 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 it goes back, they yo-yo back. So that I think is the bit, one of the biggest things is, is sustainability, not able to continue to do something for the rest of your life 
Um, and then consistency, again, they just kind of go hand in hand. Like it, it, it doesn't help to do something like for a day, you have to make a habit to do it most of the time. Yep. And it's when you start doing things most of the time that are aligned with where you're trying to go, that's where you will start to see progress and the needle move. That's exactly so, right, dude. And I think that's huge yeah. and that's super powerful. And the fact that, yeah, you have to create that consistency. I'm huge on that word. And I say it, I cannot say how many times I say that on a daily basis because it's, it's, it's just what it is. And I think obviously like, you know, in order for you to get that, you had to have, the, you have to have the education. That's the portion on the part where like, you know, oh, like, sure. People obviously work with people like you or me to, to basically coach them through the process. Like, Hey, I give you all the tool sets. Here it is. You know, we give you all this information. We talk about meal prepping. We give you all these ideas and then you implement them. You, you learn yeah. how to use it. Right. Yeah. You have to, I mean, you definitely have to have the education aspect because you have to understand why you're doing something. If you understand why you're doing something, uh, you will be more successful. You'll want to do it. Right. Um, the other aspect is like you mentioned, like the mindset, like, you know, you do have to have, you have to be, you know, I, I talk about this a lot. You'll see, you, you probably have, you know, the all or nothing type mindset. People, t- people tend to believe that, you know, I'm either doing it or I'm not doing it, or it has to be perfect. Like it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm constantly telling my clients, it's like, it ain't gotta be perfect to work. Like it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, you just have to do it consistently. And most of the time. And even if it's not perfect, if it's good enough, that's okay. Because we can always make it better if it needs to be better. So yeah, I think that's huge. Still doing some stuff. Yeah, some stuff. Still taking steps. Smaller steps at a time. I think that's that's key. Um, Yeah. Cool, man. So we have a, a few more questions before we wrap it up for today. So I call this rapid fire questions and I definitely took that from Tim Ferriss. <laughs> um, but I guess like I wanted to ask you quick things and you can just answer them, you know, briefly. So let's start off with your favorite exercise, wad or lift that you like to do. Okay. So like ex- uh, lift favorites would probably be like hang power cleans. Cause okay. I can, I can like, I can hang power clean. I used to be able to hang power clean like, a, a house couldn't <laughs> couldn't come from the floor and do it because my pool was weak. Like my my deadlift off the floor was just terrible. You're but powerful. I, if, you're powerful. If I got it from the hips, I got it to the hips. That's it, man. That's it. So yeah. Nice. And then um, I really I really also like like heavy yoke walks. Like I used wow, to nice. I used to not like them. Yeah, like some strongman stuff. Like heavy yoke walks. I think they're I think they're great. Uh, if if not a whole lot of people have access to a yoke, but if you do, like load up a yoke. And walk not, with it. You, can just, you can just try maybe some like farmer walks and just kind of like crab yeah, yeah. really heavy dumbbells and just kind of go through and and try to walk the gym. That's yeah, or, 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 or a barbell, like barbell, anything like that. But a yoke, I love heavy yoke walks. Yeah, nice. That's a good one. Yeah. Um, what about your go-to podcast for nutrition and fitness? So, like your top one or two uh, options. So funny story. Ironically, I don't really listen to a whole lot of podcasts. Um, I'm more of like a I'm old school, man. I like to read. So, nice. uh, I like to read, I like to read a lot of, well, I guess it's not really old school because I like to read a lot of blogs. Um, but I would say like blogs, like health and fitness, health and nutrition, uh, definitely like Dr. Axe, Chris Cresser, Mark yeah. Sisson, like love those, love, love those guys, like what they do. And especially nice. coming from like a health perspective, I, I really, you know, drive okay. with that. So nice. yeah. now what about, wait, actually that was my second question. So is, is there any kind of books you like to recommend people and you mentioned blogs, but is there any also books that, you know, are kind of like your go-tos or books that have definitely changed a lot of your perspective on nutrition or it could be something in like, you know, personal growth yeah. or anything like that. Yeah. So I usually, I, I, uh, it's funny, man. It's where every, most of my clients, when I, when I, talk with them like we yeah we start talking about nutrition but it it very clearly turns into things that are not about nutrition at all but it's more about like what's up here yeah yeah, exactly so uh a book that i I recommend um that mike bledsoe recommended me um to read a long time ago and i read it It was uh it's called breaking the habit of being yourself uh by a guy named joe dispenza Uh, it's a very good book it's i mean I mean, you can, li- you can see the title. It's literally about talking about change and that's, nice. that's what all this is. It's about change. So 
I think that's uh, it, it's a little hokey, but if you can get past the little hokey parts the, like of it, like uh, it'll open your mind about like how you can actually just be whatever you want to be and change. It's it really just starts with changing your mindset. Yeah. Nice. I'm gonna make sure I add that to the show notes so you guys can can go <clears throat> look into it to make sure you you can yeah. check it out. I'm a big fan also of like those kind of habit books. I'm I'm just finishing up reading The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg, yeah. which is also yeah. another really big one. We kind of focuses on that keystone habit. And I usually teach a lot of my clients a lot about that too. So that's that's awesome. Yeah. Um, this is a this is a funny one. So if you were stranded on a desert island and you can pick one food to have left. For indefinite time, what would you choose? Uh, it definitely would be pizza. Cause oh, dude, pizza. We, we, we're going to get along just fine. <laughs> <laughs> Pizza's a vegetable, right? I mean, it on. is a vegetable, right? You got all the tomatoes in there. That's awesome. That's yeah, great, I'm, man. I'm That's pizza. Awesome. Definitely pizza. Oh, yeah, hold on. What's, all right. Chain pizza. Chain pizza place. What would, what would be your pick? Like, pizza I'm not place? talking about local plate, like, but chain pizza. Like ah, I'm a big I I, I like I like Papa John's, dude. Like I'm okay. a big fan of like uh, what are you gonna <laughs> Domino's? Hell no, Domino's <laughs> no way, man. I would say, well, you know, I haven't had in a while, but uh, old school Pizza Hut, man. You know, uh, you, you ever had like pizza yeah. like with that buttery crust, man? Yeah. Like that, like I mean, I That's guess new great. school now, yeah, new school now. I guess I'd say Papa John's, uh, but actually, we have like Marco's Pizza, which is pretty good. Um, but uh, old school, yeah, old school Pizza Hut, man, that was like the best. Yeah, dude, I remember in college, I was just like, well, it was not Pizza Hut, but I would just go to like, and, and people are gonna look at me weird with this, but obviously, I was broke, and I would just go to like Hot and Ready Pizza. What's it called? Oh uh, uh, yeah, Little yeah, Little Caesars. Caesar's. Yeah. I would go in and, and like and like literally chug down one entire pizza all by myself, dude. Like, that was like my <laughs> five dollar pizza. Yeah, yeah. So couldn't beat it. That, <laughs> couldn't, couldn't beat it at all. That was a way to get yep. your nutrition, your little refeed day on that day on the week. Oh, when that, man, when I was like trying to, I was trying to bulk up, and I was I was doing a Travis Masters program, and I was trying to gain muscle mass and weight. Man, I definitely <laughs> hit up that five dollar pizza for sure. <laughs> trying so, to get all those I'm not calories. anybody do that. Yeah, that's yeah. What I do. if you're listening, <laughs> we're not suggesting, we're not telling you to go in like, you know, some crushing pizzas, you know, they can't fit, you know how to, obviously, right. but you know, it's, you know, it's all about obviously like that, that balance between a lot of those things. So that's awesome. Dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alex, yeah. so like as we're wrapping it up, so um, how can people more find out more about you? Like, you know, how can they, they find you, how they can reach out to you if they have specific questions about meal prep or anything like that. So, so we can point them yeah. in your direction. Um, I mean, you can, you can shoot me an email at, uh, alex at alexmacklin.com. Uh, you can go to my website and, uh, check, check out some of the articles I've written. Also, I do, a uh, an, a free 90 minutes, uh, nutrition consult call. So like, if you want to chat with me about your nutrition, figure out like where you need to, you know, get some feedback on what you should be doing. And then if you're interested in coaching, um, uh, yeah, you can hit me up there. Uh, I'm also just most active on social media, uh, mostly on Instagram. So my, it's just my name, Alex Q Macklin. So that's it, nice. man. That's where I am. That's where well, I'm at. Well, dude, it was great to have you today. I think definitely, and I'd love to maybe have you in the future on a podcast that we can kind of talk more about performance and more of like CrossFit specific and, yeah, and I would love to. Like working more like with athletes and how is that different from general population? And maybe we can love to chat yeah. a little more on that for a lot of people listening in. So um, that's all, man. Thank you so much for joining in today. And uh, thank you. We'll be, we'll be chatting soon. Okay. All right. Thank you. You have been listening to Viva Nutrition Radio. A couple of things before you take off. If you enjoyed this episode, please, I would love to get your feedback. So feel free to drop down a review and I will be forever grateful. Also, if you like this podcast, make sure you hit the subscribe button. We have it on iTunes, Spotify, or Google Play. And lastly, if you would like to receive a freebie from me, make sure you sign up for our newsletter at www.vive-nutrition.com. See you guys in the next episode. Ciao, ciao.